This week's crossover Thursday episode of Locked On Giants and Locked On Commanders brought to you by Prize Picks. And we've got three most important things that Patricia, the Giants, don't need to do. The Giants should not, not that they should do it, they must do these three things to beat the mighty Washington Commanders. What are they? Number one, get the ball to Malik Neighbors. I mean, last week the Giants targeted him, I want to say, what, five times? And just that's not enough. You've got this dynamic receiver, this guy who can get behind defenses, this guy who can separate, and you got to get the ball in his hands. It's that simple. You know, I, I'm not saying throw every single pass to him, but certainly get him some more targets than just, you know, the five or so that he had in week one. It just, it, it's like, you know, almost like he was invisible. I don't want to say invisible, but, you know, it just, he didn't make the impact that I think a lot of people were hoping that he could make in that game. So feed leak, uh, as he likes to be called. So that's number one. Number two, get after Jaden Daniels. As good as Jaden Daniels might look, he's still a rookie. He's still going to make rookie mistakes. He's still going to be vulnerable to pass, uh, you know, pass pressure. He's going to be vulnerable probably to disguise defenses. So do what you've got to do to get pressure on this guy and hope that he turns the ball over, makes a mistake, tries to fit something into where it doesn't belong. Just, you know, turnovers. The Giants have a pretty good one loss record when they can force at least two turnovers in a game. I think there's something like five and one, the, you know, over the, since going back uh, to 2022. So get the turnovers, force the quarterback to make mistakes. And then finally, I'm going to come back to Daniel Jones. You know, Daniel Jones has got to play better than he did last week. You know, not force stuff into to tight windows. You know, be smart about the ball. Um, the turnovers have got to stop. Now, I anticipate Daniel Jones is probably going to rely on his legs a lot in an effort to move the ball. Um, that's really the strength of his game right now. But they've got to open things up. He can't be reluctant to take some deep shots down the field. I know last week the Vikings did some stuff that took away some of those deep passes, but not mm -hmm. every play. There were opportunities to get the ball down the field when they're there, recognize them, take them, and hit them. Yeah, look, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, they didn't really expose the secondary because I think pretty much everybody already knew the secondary wasn't necessarily a strong suit of the Washington Commanders defense, but they certainly took advantage of it. And uh, Malik Neighbors, five catches, Terry McLaurin and you know, Terry McLaurin fans, would love for Terry McLaurin to just get five targets. Uh, Terry McLaurin, four targets in week one, two catches. So uh, they hear you on the feed your number one receiver. Again, doesn't matter if your number one guy is a quote unquote number one receiver in the NFL. If he's your number one, you should be feeding him. And getting pressure on any rookie quarterback is always going to be good uh, for any opposing defense. But of course, the trick on both sides of this matchup right is going to be keeping that pocket uh disciplined while you're trying to pressure that quarterback because you let him leak out and that's how you give up 88 yards rushing and then of course daniel jones uh his relationship to this this rivalry is well well documented uh patricia for the commanders the three things that they got to do must do tackle and finish which obviously includes tackling protect Jaden daniels and make your stinking field goal kicks uh so tackling the the washington commanders actually got a lot of pressure on Baker Mayfield. If I remember correctly, it was eight pressures, nine pressures on Baker Mayfield against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I cannot tell you how many times I watched Baker Mayfield ping pong in the pocket, move left, move right, move back, move up, and then escape and get yards uh, either with his feet or extend the play and find a receiver downfield. Because again, no secondary. I don't care how good your secondary is. They're not going to be able to cover for five to seven seconds. Bad ones especially cannot cover for five to seven seconds. So they've got to absolutely finish those pressures, turn them into sacks, turn them into QB hits, turn them into strip sacks, whatever you had to do, but also just tackling. There were some tackling issues on the field. And, and again, you talk about guys like uh, like Daniel Jones and how much they're going to get out of there. And you're 100% right. Watching the tape of the Vikings-Giants game, a lot of the times Daniel Jones did damage with his feet, it's because the Minnesota Vikings, in an effort to get pressure, lost pocket contain. They lost their own pocket contained, and you can't do that against quarterbacks that are looking to take advantage of you like Jaden Daniels. Right now in week one, we saw good protection of Jaden Daniels in the sense that Jaden was getting down and getting out of bounds. It didn't take a lot of hits. I know his helmet came off a couple of times, and that's all everybody's talking about. But for the most part, his weird little combat role that he's got going on instead of sliding was being pretty effective, and he was protecting himself. 
eventually, as long as he continues to do that, we'll get to a point where we don't bring that up on a regular basis. But it's only week two. We've only seen it one week. So we got to see more of Jaden Daniels making these smart decisions as he's running before we're able to move on from that topic and then field goal kickers. Uh, Patricia, when's the last time you saw a Super Bowl winning team go through five kickers in one season? I'm Never. Sure. Yeah. Um, when's the last time you saw a team go through five kickers through week one of the NFL season? Um, the I mean, the Giants came close last year. They went through, what, yeah. four kickers? Five yeah. kickers or something like that, but they they were hardly a Super Bowl t- contender. Right. But, but yeah, I mean, the Washington having Commanders an established are, kicker is important. Absolutely. The Washington Commanders are 0-1, and they are on their fifth kicker. Austin Seibert coming in for week two. Fifth time's the charm, as they say. Uh, so we'll see how he can do. But look, there, there were multiple times, Patricia, where the, the Washington Commanders actually were within a score or could have gotten it down to one score uh, in that Tampa Bay game if their field goals are made. But Cade York misses two field goals, kicks a kickoff out of bounds, all darn near misses an extra point. That's why he's out and Austin Cyber is here. So yeah, they got to tackle, they got to protect Jaden, including Jaden protecting himself. And they got to make kicks. You got to convert a point. We had a rookie quarterback. You got to convert points when the points are there to be converted. Yeah. I mean, look, you can't squander away scoring opportunities no matter what they might be because you'd only get so many opportunities to do that. And if you're squandering them away, that missed point, that missed field goal, that missed touchdown, they add up and they can be the difference in the game. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, the, the Washington Commanders lost by 17 points in the end, right? So whatever, but uh six point difference throughout the course of the game can potentially alter the outcome of that game. Even if they lose, maybe it, it alters the outcome to where they don't lose uh, by as much.